Hey everybody, Steve from the Pinball Room. All right, so today we're gonna go through and we're gonna assemble a subway onto our play field to handle when the ball goes through our horseshoe diverter and through this nice ugly hole that I drilled last time around. All right, so subways. Let's talk about subways for a little bit. Um, when do you use a subway? If you're totally brand new to pinball machine, you might think subway, what's that? You got a, a train the ball's riding on? No, subway is a term used for whenever the ball happens to go through the play field, through like a hole or something else, right? ultimately some sort of a hole, and the ball goes through the play field, and then it gets taken to another spot of the play field and popped back up onto it. For us, that's gonna be when this horseshoe diverter goes down, the ball is gonna come through, go through this hole, and if you remember in the last video, if you happen to watch it, I said, then the ball is gonna be taken all the way across underneath the play field, up here to where we have a, where we have a scoop underneath this ramp. And the scoop is then gonna pop the ball back up onto the play field and feed it out here by this upper right flipper, okay? So, we need to look at the underside of the play field then, right? Okay. And the thing you have to figure out with subways is where do you have room to put the subway, right? Typically it's just similar to like a ramp or other sort of like kind of like plastic, um, not wire form, but like ball path, right? Or ball guides. And it's going to be underneath the play field and take the ball from point A to point B, right? But you've got to, you know, make sure it fits around all the other mechs that you have sticking down, all the little bolts and screws and, and plates that are gonna be in the way. So that's one of the reasons why I've waited to do the subway until we're almost done with the majority of the lower play field on this pinball machine. There's not a whole lot more we're gonna be putting in, especially not in this area. This is, this is pretty full already, right? And so I feel pretty confident that the path that we'll be able to lay out for the subway should hopefully work or change very little between now and when we're finally, finally done with all the final components. Now, that being said, if I was really playing it safe, I'd probably wait to do the subway until we had our upper play field done. Because obviously we have a staircase and the staircase has to take the ball somewhere. It's gonna take it to an upper play field and there's gonna be flippers on that upper play field. And so I've gotta know where those flippers are gonna go, the bats, but then even more so, if you remember, flippers have really big mechs attached to them. So I've gotta fit a couple of flipper mechs in here also that are gonna drive the post. So that, that might impact the final layout of, of, of the subway and the hole and all that, but I, I don't think so. I think we're going to be okay. That being said, that's really, I guess, kind of the biggest thing I have to, to share about subways is just um, you got to go through and, you know, really consider the underside of your play field and all these different little things are sticking up from switches and drop targets and whatever else that might be going on and make sure that the play field, the ball can be taken around those, okay? Um, the other thing is um, gravity. You got to make sure you're working with gravity, right? Um, it's not going to make sense for you to have a hole down here in your play field and then hope you're gonna have it pop back up here. Now, you can do that, but you're not gonna do it just by, you know, by gravity, by the kinetic energy of the ball. If you do wanna have the ball go down at a lower place and pop up somewhere higher, then you have to fight gravity, right? So you're gonna need to have a coil of some sort so when the ball goes below, then it's gonna get kicked with force at the play field. So you can do that, but for the simpler route, do it in a way where gravity is just gonna take it. Which leads to another point. If you do have a crazy underside of your play field with posts of things all in the way, and you've got to kind of really curly cue all the way around, uh, you, you've got to consider that. You've got to make sure there's not some place where there's a bend, where then again it is kind of going up against gravity, or the bend is too sharp of an angle, so the ball just kind of gets caught. Um, a straight of a path, like drawing a string and pulling it from point A to point B, if you can follow that as closely as possible, like that's going to be your best path, right? Least resistance, least chance of the ball getting hung up somewhere. Um, Another thing to consider with subways is the whole time the ball is underneath the play field, the player's waiting for the ball. So if you have a really intricate subway that's really long and just takes it a while to go through, that, that can kind of get annoying and very boring to people. I think subways are fun and we're gonna do one in here. So let me show you how I dove into it and went about it. First thing was, I knew approximately where the hole is gonna be in my play field, and this is not a final position, um, but it's pretty close. I do know where the final position of the scoop is gonna be, where the ball needs to end up. And the thing about the scoop, the scoop sticks down below the play field a fair amount. In fact, if we go through with our little, uh, our little calipers, I always forget the name of these, these things, and measure it, we're right about 60 inches or 60 millimeters below the surface of the play field. So the subway not only needs to come down, but it also needs to kind of also have a little bit of a slope and drop down to that right height so the ball, you know, goes where it needs to go. So, the way I went about it, I figured out where it needs to start, where it needs to end. I, I literally just took some straight edges and a pencil and started kind of drawing, if you can see my pencil marks, 
<laughs> I started kind of drawing just to go through and see, okay, where does this need to go? I've got a stand-up target here. I need to be able to kind of bend around that. I've got a post sticking out through here that the threads are coming through. I've got to make it through that little area. And anyway, try to figure out kind of the fewest number of bends to get the ball where it needs to go. So once I had that, then I went to Fusion 360 and I did this. And then after I did all of that, I went through and I printed it out and we ended up with just two pieces, luckily. I was worried it was gonna be like three, but we got it all to fit on my printer with just two. So um, once again, we're just gonna kind of snap the pieces together, okay? And this looks like something the ball would travel down, right? But it's actually gonna be upside down because it's gonna hold the ball. And so this is gonna fit in like so, okay? It's got this first angle here to come behind my diverter. Got to have room for that diverter to be coming down. Okay, and it's gonna, the ball is gonna ride on that side of the subway, right? Because the gravity's pulling it that way. So we've got a curved corner here, another one down here. And then if you notice, it starts out one thickness, okay? Right about 34 millimeters tall, but it ends up much thicker on the other side. And that's again, because it needs to come even lower to get to the right spot to go into the scoop, okay? Like everything, measure twice, 3D print once. <laughs> Save yourself time and materials. I actually had to do this three times before I got it lined up and right and correct. So anyways, there we go. So we're gonna screw it in place and we're gonna try it out. Moment of truth. So we're having fun, the ball's whipping around. And then we lower the diverter. And whoop, there it is, pops out the other side. Yay, it's working, let's try that again. <laughs> Ta-da! How it jumped. And there we go. All right, everybody, we have a working subway. We got our diverter, we can lower down, the ball goes into the subway. It's not perfect. We got to figure out exactly where that hole is going to be so things can line up a little bit better. We'll probably have to change this piece a little bit. But I mean, all in all, it's working fine. It's coming down. It's not getting hung up ever. It's dropping right into the scoop where it needs to every time consistently. So I'm gonna call that a win. I feel good about this. We're getting really close, everybody, on the mechanical side. There's so much more left to do still. We've got a few more things we're gonna add to the top of the play field. Upper play field is gonna be the biggest thing. We'll get to that here soon. Next thing though is gonna be going through and taking all these dirty cuts, digitizing them, making them all nice and clean like we have down here for our lower third. So we'll be doing a little more CNC work in Fusion 360. Um, yeah, I had a request by somebody to go through and kind of show my 3D printer setup. So I'll be doing that in a follow-up video. And please, uh, thank you so much, everybody else who's kind of gone before and done some of this stuff for the comments you're throwing in, your suggestions, ways to make this better. Um, not just because it helps me, but there's a good number of people I've been finding out who've been messaging me who are trying to do their own homebrew. And so the more that we're sharing and giving ideas, I mean, everybody learns from this, right? So thank you so much, everybody. Really appreciate the support. Thanks, thanks again for watching. We'll catch you next time. Bye-bye.